So now let us take about how to know about the observations of this present experiment Veggie method. When must we focus the cross wires on the particular fringes? So we will get in the experiment the fringes like this. These are the straight fringes we will get and fringes in the experiment. Alternatively there exists the empty place. And this traveling microscope has cross wires like this horizontal wire and vertical. We have to focus this point of intersection of these cross wires on the particular fringe. Suppose if you are measuring the first fringe, we will focus this point of intersection on this first fringe. After then we will focus on the fifth fringe. So alternatively we will measure for every fringe what we have considered. So in the tabular form we will take how many times we read the experiment, how many times we observe the experiment and these are the fringe numbers. So first one, fifth one, tenth one, fifteenth, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. For every five fringes we are measuring microscope reading with taking MSR in terms of centimeters, VC in terms of coincidence and with multiplication with LC in centimeters after adding both we get a total reading next one we have measure, taken measurement for five fringes so how to take the uh, conversion to the single fringe so we are calculating the width of the five fringes that's why we are taking the difference of the individual fringes to get the width of the five fringes after measuring we will get the images for the six six times we have got it so to get the final fringe weight we divide each and every term of this x by 5 so to we get the fringe weight so again we got the fringe weight for six measurements if you take the average of all these then we get the final fringe weight that is beta next one l so in these measurements we get here for 0 there is null because here for 0 means this is not at comp that's why we are taking measurements from the 5 fringes you will get these measurements actually we don't get the width of the 5 fringes for 0 because we cannot define them next one after measuring all these we get the length of the wedge film in the experiment is 6 centimeters in the experiment next beta that is fringe width so when we are measuring uh, this fringe width we have to move the traveling microscope this screw this is the wrong screw by moving this screw cross wires will be moved will be slide on the fringes to give the measurements no need to replace the traveling microscope position for each and every fringe in the experimental pattern so this is the experiment what we are measuring so to measure l this is the distance from the glass plates and the glass plate arrangement is 45 degrees towards the light that is yes here the light source is monochromatic light source and next one we have to focus the traveling microscope exactly on the glass plate to measure the fringes here so he got here we got interference that will be measured with the help of this traveling microscope so next one here we are measuring about the precautions already we discussed the reading should be taken without parallax error our eye should be straight and this microscope should be moved only in one direction so we should not move from center to left and right we should go only in one particular direction either left to right or right to left and next one when we are doing the experiment we should clean the lens and the glass plate with the cloth before starting the experiment finally we get the result the thickness of the thin paper in terms of the centimeters this is about the interference experiment that is wedge method today our experiment is about the wedge method so the aim of this experiment is we will calculate thickness of the thin paper so in this operators this is the thin paper which is placed in between the two glass plates we will use interference concept to determine the thickness of this thin paper now in this present experiment we use the operators one is sodium vapor lamp the color of the sodium vapor lamp is yellow color and the next one we are using two glass plates here and one thin paper 
next one a glass plate which is at 45 degrees angle next one traveling microscope so these are the operators to determine the thickness of the thin paper and for measurements we use this magnifying glass to observe the readings when we are doing the experiment so next one the formula which we use in our today's experiment is thickness t is equal to lambda l by 2 beta here lambda is the wavelength of the light and l is the distance which we are measuring in this glass tube and the next one beta is the fringe width which we get after doing the experiment so the main aim of the experiment is to calculate thickness of the thin paper for that we need light wavelength length that is a wedge so let us see what is the name of the wedge our experiment title is wedge method suppose if we join these two glass plates one side is sealed other side there is air so in between these two glass plates in that air we are placing the material which thickness is to be determined so here we are getting the images in inside the two glass plates in the air medium so this sealing one side and leaving one side as a air medium is known as wedge the shape is known as air wedge so that's why our experiment name is wedge method now when we do the experiment first we switch on the light and these are the slit arrangements this is apertures light passes from this wooden board through this slit arrangement and we know that our this topic belongs to interference in interference topic light travels in the form of waves so from this light source light is traveling in the form of a wave and first it will incident on this glass plate which is inclined at 45 degrees angle towards the light so this glass plate will focus the light on the glass plates arrangement so in this case light will be get superposed between the two glass plates to get interference concept we know that interference is a combination of both constructive interference and a destructive interference so during constructive interference we get bright image and during destructive interference we will get a dark image so we have to see or the images which are formed in the experiment with the help of traveling microscope so this is the operators of traveling microscope here we have horizontal scale and also the vertical concept of the scale but today we are learning the measurements in the horizontal scale now observe traveling microscope this is long scale and this is said to be the short scale this long scale is main scale and the short scale is vernier scale on main scale 1 cm is divided into 20 divisions that's why one main scale division is 1 by 20. Next one, Vernier scale. We have 50 divisions on the Vernier scale. So, if any instrument have main scale and Vernier scale, then the measurement formula for least count is 1 main scale division by total number of Vernier scale divisions. Here one main scale division is 1 by 20 by total number of linear scale divisions is 50. So 1 by 20 by 50, 1 by 1000. So 0 0.001 centimeters is the least count of this traveling microscope. Whenever you are measuring the images, you should know first of all what is the division of 1 in the main scale. That is already we learned it. It is 1 by 20, 0 0.05. Every division adds up with 0 0.05 on the main scale. Next one, Vernier scale divisions has 50 divisions. 
whenever we are measuring the main scale and vernier scale the first division of this vernier will show one reading on the main scale that is main scale revision or main scale reading and whenever we have to calculate vc among this 50 divisions any of the division will exactly match with the main scale division that is known as vc so to calculate the total value of main scale and vernier coincidence with the vc we use the formula main scale reading plus vernier coincidence into lc and we have to apply for remaining now observe the operators of the traveling microscope we have two lenses one lens is towards the image and one lens is towards our eye so here the lens which is towards the object that is called objective and the lens which we are seeing with our eye that is called as eye lens and in between these two we can adjust this with the help of rock and pinion arrangement so to measure the images there is a cross wires which is present inside this traveling microscope cross wires has one horizontal line and one vertical line so when we observe this traveling microscope through this eye lens or this eye piece we will observe this cross wires inside the traveling microscope so whenever we measure the image we focus this point of intersection of cross wires on that particular fringes so today in our experiment the image of the images what we get in this experiment is straight lines here we have straight lines and in between them there exist an empty place so we have alternatively bright image and also alternatively dark images next one when we are observing mean scale reading and vernier coincidence as they are very near we use this magnifying glass to see the readings clearly so magnifying glass will increase the size of the measurements both on the main scale and also on the vernier scale next one when we are measuring the experiment we will focus the cross wires on the fringes as the fringes are very nearer we will use for every four or for every five fringes and we will calculate the measurements of the total reading by using main scale reading vernier coincidence and the least count of this experiment after measuring the total reading for five fringes then we will calculate for one fringe by taking individual difference of the fringes after gathering for every each fringe we will take the average concept of all the fringes then we will get the width of the fringes so by doing the experiment we will get beta value and for length that is the distance from the one side of the glass plate here we have taken sealed one side and the remaining side we are taking about the length so l is by use by measuring the glass plate's length and beta is by doing the experiment next for wavelength lambda we take it as a standard value this is sodium vapor lamp so its wavelength is 5893 angstrom units by substituting all these values we will get the thickness of this thin paper the main aim of the experiment is to determine the thickness of the thin paper next one after measuring we will get the result so for every experiment first we should know aim of the experiment that is the thickness of the thin paper next the operators which we are using next formula that is lambda l by 2 beta next one tabular forms here we get only one tabular form to determine the thickness of the thin paper we will use in the tabular form serial number how many times we are doing the experiment and the next one fringe numbers for for how many fringes we are taking and its particular number after then microscope reading for that we use msr in one column 
we see when near coil is coincidence and we see into lc in another column next to total reading msr plus vc into lc next one individual difference of the fringes after then we by taking the average we will get the fringe weight so actual main aim is thickness but by doing the experiment we get only fringe weight after then there, there exists a substitution of this value in the final formula to get final result our result is in cg scale so we get the thickness of this uh, fringes what we are measuring in terms of centimeters next what is the precaution which we should follow in the experiment is while we are reading observations our eye should be direct towards the measurement to avoid parallax error next one when we are handling the measurements also this glass plate should be in 45 degrees angle otherwise we do not get the images perfectly and when handling traveling microscope we should move the scale only in one direction to avoid backlash errors yes this is about the thin films experiment regarding wedge method so now our present experiment is about newton rings this also depends upon the light property interference so in our experiment the aim of this newton rings experiment is we are using planar convex lens it has one plane surface and one curved surface this is the arrangement at the bottom now our experiment is about newton rings and in this newton rings light exhibit in the form of a wave and it undergo interference this experiment is application of light property interference so first one aim of the experiment every experiment starts with an aim that is the objective so in this experiment we will calculate radius of curvature for plano convex lens now observe plano convex lens here we have glass plate at the bottom and at the top we have plano convex lens it has two surfaces bottom surface is curved and the top surface is plane so as the bottom surface is curved it has only one point so that is called point of contact so as the bottom surface is curved it has radius that is called radius of curvature so this is the aim of the experiment that is determination of radius of curvature of the given plano convex lens by forming newton rings so newton rings is the image pattern which is formed with the phenomena of interference and the shape of the image is circle this is about the shape of the image which we get in newton rings experiment we will get n rings in the experimental pattern at the center we have spot and around this central spot we have many number of the rings but alternatively there is empty place in between them because we have interference as both combination of constructive interference and also the destructive interference now let us see the operators of the experiment we are using in this operators sodium vapor lamp this gives yellow color it has only one wavelength and traveling microscope already we used in wedge method next one we are using plano convex lens and the glass plate here top one is plano convex lens and the bottom one is the glass plate and this glass plate which is inclined at 45 degrees angle is known as beam splitter and to observe the images we are using the lens this is called magnifying lens so these are the operators for our today's experiment now let us see how to do the experiment because we are measuring the radius of curvature for plano convex lens for that we will use the formula as highest ring diameter square minus lowest ring diameter square 
by 4 into considered light wavelength in the experiment and the difference of the ring numbers that is highest ring number minus lowest ring number. So, in this formula dm is highest ring and dn is the lowest ring, m is the highest ring number and n is the lowest ring number, lambda is the wavelength of the light source which is used in the experiment. Now how to do the experiment? Now we will switch on the light source then light is emitting in the form of the waves and they incident on the beam splitter which is inclined at 45 degrees angle. So this light will be focused on the plano convex lens and glass plate arrangement. So in this experiment light will be get interfered between plano convex lens curved surface and the glass plate that is a single point of contact and in between these two plano convex lens and glass plate air is present that's why our images are formed in air medium. For air medium refractive index is 1. So in this experiment when light will focus on this plano convex lens and the glass plate we will get the rings that is a circular shaped rings. When we are measuring the circular shaped rings diameter we will use this traveling microscope. It has long mean scale and short veneer scale. Next one, we know that main scale, each centimeter is divided into 20 divisions. So, 1 centimeter is divided into 20 divisions. So, 1 division value is 1 by 20 and total number of divisions on veneer scale is 50. So, 1 by 20 by 50, it is 1 by 1000. 1 by 1000 means 0 0.001 centimeters is the least count of the this traveling microscope. Next when we are measuring the ring diameter we will move this screw to replace the crosswise on the rings. Next one for previous wedge method as the image is straight line no need to go two times on the same straight line but here the image is a ring that's why we have to measure the ring dimension both left and right side to make the difference of that ring two types that is called as the diameter of the ring pattern. This is the experimental diagram of Newton rings with S is the monochromatic light source used in this experiment and this will be transmitting and incident on the 45 degrees glass plate here. This is called beam splitter. You are aware of this beam splitter in theory class also which will focus the light on the arrangement. So this beam splitter at 45 degrees angle will focus the light on the plano convex lens and glass plate arrangement. So here light will be trapped in between the plano convex lens and the glass plate. There exists a point in which both of them are in touch that is called point of contact. At point of contact we have central spot and with, if we observe these rings through this traveling microscope we will get these rings. Next the color of the light which we used in this experiment is yellow for sodium vapor lamp that's why the color of these images are also yellow color rings or get in the experiment. Next one, when we are measuring this diameter of the ring pattern, this is the tabular form which we are using. The standard wavelength of the sodium vapor lamp is 5893 in terms of angstrom units and in terms of centimeters it is 
5893 एट नाइन थ्री इंटू टेन पवर मैनस एट नैक्स्ट वन वी आर् यूसिंग ट्रावली मैक्रोस्को बोथ इन बेच मेथड अंड आलो इन द न्यूटन रिंग्स सो द लीस्ट कौंट आफ दि ट्रावली मैक्रोस्को इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो वन सेटर्स फॉर् एव्री इंस्ट्रूमेंट इट हेज ए लीस्ट कौंट हियर आलो ट्रावली मैक्रोस्को आलो हेज द लीस्ट कौंट वी गेट दिस लीस्ट कौंट बै यूसिंग द फार्मला वन मेन स्केल डिवीजन बै टोटल नंबर आफ् वेयर स्केल डिवीजन on main scale one centimeter is divided into 20 lines that is 20 divisions so one main scale division is 1 by 20 by total number of vernier scale divisions is 50 so 1 by 20 by 50 means 1 by 1000 that is equal to 0.001 centimeters now which are the properties which we are using to calculate the diameter of the ring first serial number it will indicates how many times we are doing the experiment so serial number indicates the time we are using next one number of the ring so if we are calculating for fourth ring we take it as a fourth eighth ring fourth 12th ring 12 and 16th ring 16 and for 20th ring it is take it as 20 so whatever may be the ring number we are taking we take that number so if you take this then it is 4th ring 8 this is 8th ring at each and every ring we should focus the point of intersection of the cross wires on that ring 4th ring means we should measure from the center of the central spot we should measure so from the central spot ring numbers we should not measure from this side outside to inside we should count the ring numbers from the center towards left or right for example if this is a central spot from that we will consider the ring numbers and we should focus the point of intersection of the cross wires on that particular ring both sides both sides we should measure and after then taking the difference of that particular ring we will get the diameter of that single ring like that we will measure for all the rings so for the fourth ring we are measuring the microscope reading both right side and also left side when you are measuring right side then focus this point of intersection of the cross wires on the fourth ring right side and take msr value and bc value msr means we have to calculate the coincidence of the vernier scale suppose if vernier scale focus on this main scale the first division of this vernier scale will focus one value that is main scale division so it is in terms of centimeters because we are measuring on the main scale next the 50 divisions we should not measure this upward we will we have to measure this downward values here we have 0.1 0.2 0.3 point 0.4 they are in terms of other units but now we are measuring it in terms of centimeters so this is taken as the first division after then we will count the number of the division if 20th line coincides with the main scale then bc is 20 if 10th line coincides bc is 10 if 30th line coincides then bc is 30 like that we have to measure main scale divisions and vernier scale divisions now here the distance between the ring pattern is same so we get the same difference in the msr for all the rings in one side and after measuring vc multiply with lc then we will get the measurements of vc into lc after getting msr and vc into lc add them to get the total reading on right side same pattern we go to the left side also first we will focus the fourth ring left side and we will measure msr and vc after getting vc we will multiply with lc to get a total reading so we will measure this for fourth ring 8th 12th 16th and also 
20 year frames now already i mentioned that in traveling microscope we should move only in a single direction we should not point out fourth ring means from the center to fourth right and from center to fourth left we should not follow like that we should follow only in a single direction from left to right or from left to right to left so in this pattern for fourth ring we, are, we should go to the highest ring number 20 and then we will come in the decreasing order in one side and increasing order in the other side we should move only in a single direction to avoid backlash error in the experiment after getting both the readings of right side and the left side then take the difference to get the diameter of that particular ring fourth ring difference of right side and left side gives diameter of particular fourth ring like that for remaining all the rings so this is the value of diameter of the ring in terms of centimeters if you take the square of this diameter we get d square values in terms of centimeter actually this is about experimental observation but we should draw the graph to measure the direct values which we are using in the experiment that is highest ring and also lowest ring diameters so here the process is first you should learn the experiment do the experiment second step after getting the values of d square and the number of the rings we should plot the graph x axis we should take number of the rings it is a number no need of units on y axis we are taking d square values so this is about d square after getting the values of m n and also d square values we will 0.17 which we plotted in the experiment corresponding x and y quadrants match and we will take it as a points where we get so the coordination of each ring with respect to its particular diameter d square is plotted in the experiment after completion of each plotting of quadrants if so we are plotting the graph between number of ring and d square so for every ring 4 we get the corresponding d square and for 8th ring 12th ring 16th ring and 20th ring so to draw the graph first of all we should know the scale here one block is said to be one unit and whatever we are taking that unit we should mention scale is important for all the graphs on x axis we should mention on y axis also we should mention x axis we are taking number of rings that's why we should mention how many rings we have taken for one unit next on y axis also we should mention one unit how much value we have taken on x axis one unit that is taken as two rings on y axis one unit we have taken 0.05 as it is d square value it is a centimeter square corresponding units should be mentioned to draw the graph next after pointing out this all the points we draw a line joining the origin next one let us join any of these two points on this straight line to x axis and also y axis now the point where it touches the x axis we will get m value here we have taken n value highest ring as the m value that that depends upon our denotation so the corresponding n that is dn square and the corresponding m dm square so from y axis we get dm square value and dn square value and from x axis we will get n and m values after them we will substitute in the experiment to so this is the formula to calculate radius of curvature for the given plane of convex lens numerator is the difference of the diameters and the denominator is 4 into wavelength into difference of the rings on y axis we will get dm square and dn square from the graph so dm square dn square m value n value from the graph lambda value standard value from the experiment so we will substitute all the values which we get in from the graph substitute and lambda value 5893 angstrom units conversion to 
CGS scale into 10 power minus G8. So, after substituting higher swing diameter and the square of the lower swing diameter by 4 into light wavelength 5893 into 10 power minus 8 into difference of the ring numbers highest swing is 11 from the graph and the lowest swing is 7. So, difference of that. After simplifying these all values, we get final radius of curvature for plano convex lens as 37.12 centimeters. So, what is the precaution should be followed in the experiment? Already I mentioned in the experiment, microscope should be moved only in one direction, either left to the right or right to left to avoid backlash error and the lens and the glass plate should be cleaned in the experiment. When we are measuring the readings, our eye should be straight to avoid the parallax error.